Good afternoon, Dr. Healton, Dr. Grivatz, Dr. Malone, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, members of the graduating class, family and friends. My name is Pat Clunan. I'm the Dean of the School of Nursing and Health Studies, and I welcome you to the commencement exercises of Georgetown University. Please remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. The national anthem will be led by members of the Georgetown University Choir and Chamber Singers under the direction of, Pre of Professor Frederick Binkholder. <laughs>
much. The invocation will be offered by the Reverend Greg Shendon of the Society of Jesus, a Roman Catholic chaplain in the Office of Campus Ministry. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we come to you today enlivened with your spirit of gratitude for making us collaborators in your ongoing work of creation. You have called each of us to be part of this community at Georgetown these years, blessing us with the inimitable legacy that began with St. Ignatius of Loyola and has been passed down from generation to generation. The gift of our mission, founded on the practice of reflection and discernment, has empowered us to make decisions which have called us to stand in solidarity and in kinship with all who share our journey on Earth and moves each of us to live lives of active service rooted in justice and love. These gifts of our Ignatian heritage invite us to be part of this tradition, uniquely at Georgetown, building on the wisdom of the past with a vision open to the opportunities of the future. These gifts now also dare each of us to move beyond what is known and secure, broadening our imagination deepening our trust in you, and emboldening us to establish your kingdom here on earth. Fill each of us with wonder and awe as we continue to take forth these gifts with open minds, generous hearts, and passionate spirit. As family, parents, and spouses this day, we thank you for the treasured individuals seated standing here before us. They have become the committed learners we celebrate and admire today through a profound transformation that amazes each of us. As faculty, staff, and administrators at this university, we are grateful to you for the opportunity to participate in the formation of these students, to honor them for their hard work and achievement, and to thank them for the inspiration they provide to keep us going in our own chosen vocations. And as friends, we thank you for the gifts of loyalty and kindness they have shared with us and for the models of service and dedication they have been for us. The goods that are our lives are, are, are an offer are the gifts from you. Our lives with all their freedom, our distracted minds, our often weak wills and failing memories, these are our gifts to you. Hear our simple prayer. When we are weak, be our strength. When we doubt, be our faith. When we are anxious, be our peace. When discouraged, our hope. And when we're lost, come to find us. When we're hungry, be our food. And thirsty, be our drink. When we are in darkness, be our light. And when we're saddened, be our comfort and joy. Let us feel your touch in all we say and do. Let us grow and blossom in your love. Grant us this, O oh God, and there's nothing more we want until we see you face to face. Take all we have and all we are. Give us your love and your grace. With these, we are full. Yes, we are full. Amen. Thank you, Father Shendon. And please be seated. Our founder, the Most Reverend John Carroll, first Archbishop of Baltimore and first Catholic Bishop in the United States, took legal possession of land on our hilltop in 1789. And we mark that as our founding date. Our first student, the future North Carolina Congressman William Gaston, arrived in 1791, and our first bachelor's degrees were awarded in 1817. It was in 1815 that with enrollments passing the 100 mark, the college's president, Father John Grassi of the Society of Jesus, asked then Congressman Gaston to present a petition for a federal charter, a document that still today sanctions the academic business that we do here on the hilltop. 
It is our custom to initiate academic ceremonies with a reading of that charter. To discharge that office, I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Mary Ann Lachat, Associate Professor of Professional Nursing Practice. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as we now are, or from time to time may be, the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other person meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges or universities in the United States, and to issue in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission to such degrees. Langdon Shivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Guyard, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison. Thank you, Mary Ann. Again, um, on behalf of our faculty and our staff, we really are thrilled to welcome you to Georgetown University School of Nursing and Health Studies commencement. Today is an extraordinarily exciting day. It is for us up here, and I'm sure it is for those of you in the audience as well. When the school was first founded in 1903, its primary goal was actually education of a nursing workforce for the then new Georgetown Hospital. Our first graduates, all eight of them, received their diplomas at a ceremony in Gaston Hall in June of 1906. So when I think about the 110 years that have elapsed between the first graduating class and your graduating class, I'm struck by two major themes, extraordinary transformation and enduring values. Regarding the first, it will come as no surprise to any of you in this audience that healthcare, our whole environment, the way in which we think about delivering care, has changed in extraordinary ways. It demands that we re be very creative, innovative, nimble, responsive, reflective, and we've really worked to embed those characteristics in the education that you've received for here. Scientific discovery has fundamentally changed the way we think about delivering healthcare the way we think about promoting health, preventing illness, and transforming systems. Complexities in our political and health policy environment really demand that we have very talented healthcare administrators, those folks who have a deep understanding of the relationship between policy, legislation, and the delivery of care. And our interconnected world means that the health and well-being of our global community matters deeply to us regardless of where we are living and practicing. Our school's identity since the early 20th century has evolved in pretty dramatic ways to prepare students to excel and contribute to a whole variety of domains that make up this extraordinary industry that we call healthcare. But amid these changes, we think it's really important for us to always reflect on what endures. And at Georgetown, we're really enormously privileged to have a values-based framework that draws its inspiration from our Catholic and Jesuit traditions that are embedded in part of the foundation of our university. So while healthcare continues to evolve and will continue to evolve, our approach of working with our students and our community partners to really engage the whole person to celebrate community and diversity, to serve the common good with a particular focus on care for those who are the most marginalized and vulnerable. And finally, what we are about is forming men and women to live generously in service to others. 
This really undergirds all that we do, and it is foundational to the way in which we think about developing our engagement with each of you. So we call upon you, each and every one of you, our newest graduates, to employ not only the knowledge and the skills that you've learned in our various graduate programs as you launch into the world, but to bring that knowledge and skill in a way that is embedded in the values that we think are deeply important for the future of a vibrant health community and a citizenship whereby health is available and accessible and high quality for everybody. So we offer you our deepest congratulations to you as well as to your family and friends. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you the honorary degree recipient. Um, President John DeJoya conferred the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa upon Dr. Beverly Malone, our esteemed guest and commencement speaker at our first ceremony earlier today. I invite Professor Joan Burgraff Riley, Assistant Dean for Educational Innovation, to the podium to read the honorary degree citation. Florence Nightingale, the legendary pioneer of modern nursing, once expressed, where there were none who were discontented with what they have, the world would never reach anything better. The sentiment captured in Nightingale's quotation, one of tireless commitment to improvement driven by dissatisfaction with the status quo, could describe the career path of the preeminent healthcare leader we honor here today at commencement. Dr. Beverly Malone is the Chief Executive Officer of the National League for Nursing in the United States. Prior to assuming this position in February 2007, she served for six years as General Secretary of the Royal College of Nursing in the United Kingdom, the largest union of nurses in the world. It was a long journey. The eldest of seven siblings, she was raised in Elizabethtown in rural Kentucky in the still segregated south of the United States. She earned her bachelor's degree in nursing from the University of Cincinnati and then worked as a nurse in New Jersey, obtaining a master's degree in adult psychiatric nursing from Rutgers. In 1972, she was appointed instructor of psychiatric nursing at Wayne State University. She was awarded her PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Cincinnati in 1981 and then became assistant administrator of the medical center there. In 1986, Dr. Malone was appointed dean of the School of Nursing at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University a historically black university and was named interim vice chancellor of the university in 1994. In 1996, Dr. Malone was elected president of the American Nurses Association, an organization representing 180,000 registered nurses throughout the United States, becoming the second African American to hold this position. President Bill Clinton named her deputy assistant secretary for health in the Department of Health and Human Services at the time, the highest position nurse had ever held in the U.S. government. In 2001, she became the General Secretary of the Royal College of Nursing. With 400,000 nurses, the largest professional union of nursing staff in the world, a position she held until January 2007. How could this American, she and others asked, run the most prestigious professional nursing trade union in the world? Dr. Malone's spectacular career makes the answer very clear. She was simply the most qualified person in the entire nursing world. And in that role, she became an effective member of and often spokesperson for the Higher Education Funding Council for England, the European Federation of Nursing Associations, the Commonwealth Nurses Federation, and the International Council of Nurses. In 2006, she was appointed a member of the UK delega delegation to the World Health Assembly. She had previously represented the United States in a similar role. And from 2007 to the present, she has served as CEO of the National League for Nursing, which has a membership of 40,000 nurse faculty and 1,200 institutions. Dr. Malone is a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing and an elected member of the National Academy of Medicine. Insisting that healthcare is a right rather than a privilege, Dr. Malone has urged greater visibility of the nursing profession. She is committed to helping produce a diverse nursing workforce 
and provide care for patients in ways that address the changing dynamics of today's technology-rich rich healthcare environment. Dr. Malone is particularly concerned with fostering connections between the nursing profession and corporations, associations, and foundations. NLN partnerships and collaborations range from Johnson & Johnson, Laredo Medical Corporation, to AARP, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. All share the goal of advancing the science of nursing education. In 2009, she was remarkably prescient in testimony before Congress addressing the persistent shortage of nurses that threatens healthcare delivery in America today. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits and therefore the first founder of this Jesuit university insisted, love is shown more in deeds than in words. Could there be a better definition of the selfless care at the core of the healthcare professions? And so, it is entirely fitting as we send off our new graduates into the challenging and rewarding health fields that we set before them this figure who embodies a striking combination of cutting edge practice and steadfast compassion that defines her calling. Thus, with heartfelt admiration and eager praise, Georgetown University today conferred upon Beverly Malone the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. So now, it is my incredible pleasure and great honor to present Dr. Beverly Malone, who will deliver the commencement address. I am truly honored to be here with you. To the president, his senior team, faculty, alumni, and the students, most importantly, those to whom the day belongs. Close your eyes and take a deep breath of your accomplishment. The resilience that has carried you through challenges, over mountains of difficulty, and reframed the idea of courage to one who makes it successfully through that course. If one chooses to think about their education like a journey, then today is the stop along the way to celebrate. Or perhaps last night was the day <laughs> to. On any journey for a lifelong learner, you will need a suitcase, luggage that can even end up being useless baggage. There is always the question of what do you take with you for the next part of the trip and what do you leave behind? As an expert packer, due to my extensive travels, I have some recommendations that may be useful or not as you place your foot on the road to the next part of your journey. Know where your North Star is Keep it in view. I'm speaking of the North Star of your energy, your passion, or simply your way forward. So I would suggest that you pack your core values. Regardless of the next step, you will need, the, you will need them to keep you oriented and following your yellow brick road. Let me share some of mine. Caring, integrity, diversity, which is really inclusion, and excellence. Caring is promoting health, healing, and hope in response to the human condition. I'm a nurse, a psychiatric mental health nurse extraordinaire. <laughs> so this is my bedrock. When I lose my caring, I'm losing a major part of who I am and have been for some time. Everyone in the US seems to have gotten the idea of a healthy nation instead of an illness nation. But healing, I'm a healer. And if my poor parents hadn't come over on a rocky conveyance years and years ago, I would be in somebody's village saying, I'm your village healer. 
I am your village healer. And then there's hope. Hope is this thing that you shouldn't wait till you get to an interaction with patients or families. You should have hope with you at all times, a self-generating mechanism of hope. Integrity, respecting the dignity and moral wholeness of every person without conditions or limitations. There used to be a psychologist, Carl Rogers, who talked about unconditional regard. This is just being human and respectfully sharing the planet with others. And then there's diversity with inclusion, affirming the uniqueness of and differences among persons, ideas, values, and ethnicities. It's bigger than color. This is truly required for your global citizenship. It is coming to your own backyard and necessary to effectively live in this world where countries merge, bump into one another. You see, they were previously protected by the imaginary, the imagined boundaries that we had. Make sure you pack. Excellence, and excellence is probably one of my favorite values. Co-creating and implementing transformative strategies with daring ingenuity. I like it a lot, let me say it again. Co-creating and implementing transformative strategies with daring ingenuity. And this co-creating is very important because I don't think we do anything by ourselves unless when we're writing a letter of reference and we want to make sure that we get into certain, certain organization. Other than that, we should be co-creating, collaborating with each other. And then you can co-create all day long, but if you don't implement, it means absolutely nothing. And what is this about transformative strategies? Hmm. Well, let me give you this example. Someone asked me to define transformation. I'll share it with you. If I give you a dollar and you give me back four quarters, you have given me change. Thank you very much. <laughs> if I give you a dollar and you give me back five dollars, we have transformed the situation. And that's what we're looking for. With your graduation, colleagues, we're looking for some transformation. But then I also want to challenge you around this whole thing around daring ingenuity, because it's a very important piece of the whole puzzle. Daring ingenuity. If you live long enough and walk long enough in terms of being a leader, you will find yourself running into a cliff and perhaps off that cliff. Now, if you know the cliff is coming, it's a good idea to take uh, something and line the chasm to make sure you just don't fall off into it. And if you do, well, I mean, you fall off with grace. And people say, did you see how beautifully Bev Malone fell off that cliff? <laughs> because when you don't, you just fall ugly. <laughs> so this is the idea of excellence. And it's always, it's never right there. You've, it's always moving. So you think you've got it. I mean, you've graduated, isn't that excellent? But it's, it moves, so it's already moving in front of you. And you'll find the next opportunity is stretching out in front of you. So I just want to remind you about your core values. Don't forget that the smartest guys in the room had three of the four values that I've mentioned. Caring was the only one missing. Having the values and aspiring to live the values are two very different things. Pack an understanding of how precious time is. Pack an appreciation for years, 
days, hours, and minutes. I always pack this poem to carry with me, God's minute. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, but it's up to me to use it. Give a count if I abuse it, it's only just a minute, but all eternity is in it. So, let me give you an example, because your suitcase must be bulging by now. But related to excellence, pack your world of possibilities. Mine go like this. I never thought I could be dean of nursing at North Carolina A&T State University. But I never thought I couldn't. I never thought that I could be president of the American Nurses Association, but I never thought I couldn't. I never thought I could be deputy assistant secretary for health, but I never thought I couldn't. I never thought that I could be general secretary of the Royal College of Nursing in the United Kingdom, but I never thought I couldn't. I never thought that I could be the chief executive officer of our nation's oldest and most treasured nursing organization. But I never thought I couldn't. Pack the possibilities. Leave the could nots behind. Let me add another three things to leave behind. Leave your admiration and gratitude for your faculty and mentors, to inspire them as they continue to teach others. Let the world know you stand on the shoulders of giants. It's a cinch by the inch. Did you know that? It's hard by the yard. Leave that yard mentality as you keep steadily inching, inching along toward your goal, stopping to breathe deeply and celebrate along the way. Leave your concept of defeat, knowing that I can be delayed, but not defeated. The accomplishment of this degree resounds within your very core, announcing there may be delays, but no defeats anywhere to be found. As long as I have breath, that one minute, I have opportunities, possibilities that I have not yet explored. I'm wondering if there's anything else you should pack or leave behind. Well, let's try leaving your stress. But it may find you wherever you have gone and follow you to that location. It may have a GPS. So let me give you a brief strategic view of stress. There are three types of stressors, inevitable, imposed, and chosen. Inevitable stress can be summed up as illness, aging, and death. If you were never sick a day in your life, you died first. That was your major accomplishment. <laughs> Imposed stress simply means that someone had the audacity to give it to you. And you had the audacity to accept it. Usually, family and friends are quite adept at this one. I have a toolkit for managing imposed stress. I look at it, mm, doesn't look like my stress. I smell it, doesn't smell like my stress. I taste it, mm, doesn't taste like Bev Malone stress. I put it back in the box, wrap it back up, send it back, wrong address. And finally, Chosen, that's right, 
we have the freedom to choose our stress. We usually forget that we have chosen that particular stressor later in life, whether it's a job, a friend, or a life partner. But many of our stressors are chosen. And once we can label the stressor, we have the authority and ability to make other choices. These three stressors, I wish they would take time and only one would interact with you at a time. So you would have your inevitable stress sitting over here, and then you would have your imposed stress, and then, of course, you would have your chosen stress. But no, colleagues, they all act together at the same time. So these stresses are incredibly important for you to manage. And I just want to say, leave them behind. No need to take them with you. And if you do accidentally take them with you, manage them. So, colleagues, I wish you every success. I wish you all the possibilities. I hope you take your core values with you and you know very clearly that your, those core values have meaning to you. I hope you take your minute, your hour, your year with you. It is my hope that you will just fly. You will know where your day is. You will know where that northern star is. You will know how to keep your eye on that. Keep flying all the time. That's our expectation. All of these folks up here are looking at you. They help to teach you. And the goal is to keep flying. Thank you so very much. Now, she is a tough act to follow. <laughs> but thank you. We are deeply grateful um, for your presence with us, uh, Beverly. I now have the honor to present Dr. Norberto Grivas, Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. On behalf the, of the Graduate School of Arts and Science, let me offer First, my congratulations to all of you, the graduates. We'll now have the presentation of candidates completing the Master of Science degree. Dr. Peggy Compton, Associate Dean for Research, Evaluation, and Graduate Studies, will read the names of the candidates. Dr. Amanda Little, past chair of the executive faculty, will assist Dr. Clunan with the presentation of the diploma scrolls. Students will receive their master hoods from the representatives of our graduate programs. Dr. Ryong Su, Health Systems Administration. Professor Tiffany Pelafi, Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner. Dr. Kathleen Gray, Family Nurse Practitioner. And Dr. Ladan Eshkevari, Nurse Anesthesia. And finally, Dr. Julia Lang Kessler, nurse midwifery, women's health nurse practitioner. Afterwards, Dr. Edward Hilton, executive vice president for health sciences, will confer the degrees. Marina Sterling. Roxandra Andrea, Andres, Carolyn Dooley, Alexander Fallick, Allison Fishman.
Melissa Jelanji. Tina Wang. Megan Klein. Brandon Locke. Brandon Lowe. Julia McSorley. Anusha Rao. Alex Sass. <laughs> Katrina Smith. <laughs> Jacqueline Taji. David White. Aspen Adams. Sonia Alexiev. Jane F. Allen. Lee Robinson Alred. Sean M. Amidio. Leland Altmeyer. Lauren E. Anderson. Francis Andrada. <laughs> Rachel H. Arnold. Martha Jane Bean. Woo! Roberta A. Biso. Woo! Connie Rose Bencito. Brooke N. Boggs. Susan Borges. Janine Nikki Bowen. Sarah J. Bradshaw. Megan K. Brazin. Jennifer Buchanan. Catherine K. Callahan. Erica R. Campero, excuse me, Erica R. Campanero. Ashley Carlson Shalifo. Rashna Chetiar. Jennifer L. Childs. Ryan Russell Clapp. Rebecca A. Claxton. Jill A. Coltrane. Woo! 
April Conlon. Kristen Connolly. Karen A. Chrissy. Jessica H. Crow. Brittany S. Curtis. Stephanie Cussworth. Annalise Darcy. Annette Marie Davis. Melissa Dolly. Stacy Deal. Danielle Delozier. Elizabeth Daring. Delfina Dibia. Danielle Doris. Mary Faith Dudley. Obi a girly, Daru Anumataki. Much easier. Nicole Eckerson. Dahlia N. El Sayed. Michelle N. Arandi. Brianne Mikhail Finstead. Andrea Fishlowitz. Devin M. Fitzpatrick. Dana Flishhacker. <laughs> Tiffany Rache Florence. <laughs> Kathleen M. Ford. Kristen L. Fortin. <laughs> Melissa Gagliardi. <laughs> Amanda C. Geary Sowers. <laughs> Caitlin J. Para. Melissa J. Smith. Lisa M. Smith. Kelsey Caton Solano. Heather M. Southwick. Mary Steek Van Lowen. Tony V. Steris. Rachel E. Stern. Courtney R. Summerskill. Neely B. Sutton. Sorry. 
Rebecca A. Severson. Amy Tewksbury. Amanda Thorpe. Melissa A. Trobe. Kathleen A. Tremblay. Caitlin A. Tremblay. Balada Usher Enkel. Stacy L. Uten. Uten. Sorry. Amy E. Vance. Luann L. Van Fossen. Kathleen E. Van Vorst. Matthew Philip Wagner. Allison Walkowski. Heather A. Walsh. Crystal N. Wise. Aaron B. Wilkins. Caitlin M. Wilson. Latoya J. Wilson. Sarah Wirtz Hughesby. Catherine L. Zayner. Amy Zepnik. Dana Marie Jesmondi. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Gila Nella. Nella, excuse me. Heidi E. Guilford. Tatiana N. Grant. Crystal M. Greason. Jenny A. Hamby. Catherine Grace Hamilton. Brittany I. Harris. Carolyn H. Hauger. Carissa M. Henderson. Lauren A. Heightens. Jackson Huang. Jennifer L. Hustle. Lisa C. Isaacson. Adam M. James. Madeline C. Jenkins. Jessica A. Josias.
Amy A. Johnson. Elizabeth Johnston. Lauren E. Jones. Michael Jordan. <laughs> well, let them quiet down. Michaela L. Horine. Jennifer L. Keenlan. Denise King. Melissa K. Klausman. Angela M. Clock. Carolyn D. Canopley. Shaheen Lakani. <laughs> Janae L. LaSalle Lister. James M. Lehman. Ellen S. Leidig. Jeanette R. Liller. Alejandra Linarias. Andrea K. Long. Marin L. Mansfield. Kelly Keith Marchant. Lydia E. Marino. Emily M. Martino. Michael K. McDermott. Sherilyn L. McFadden. <laughs> Caitlin C. McFarland. Nathan D. McGathy. Haley A. McGoldrick. Kristen McTee. Michael F. Menchaca. Jamie B. Miller. Jolene Miller. Joanne M. Ming. Oh, Joanna. Carrie J. Moeller Thomas. Catherine M. Mafu. Josephine Mojeni. Gwendolyn Morrison. Anne Marie C. Munana.
Joshua Monday. Ruthann Naborski. Abby R. Neely. Nicole Marie Nova. Cheryl B. Novak. Colleen L. Nuzzelis. Abigail H. O'Connell. Catherine O'Donnell. Vera Ogimbo. Pamela Ogia. Jessica L. Oldham. Rebecca J. Orozco. Melissa Osborne. Sarah A. Park. Pervy Patel. Lena Patton. Tamika Picus. Casey Peltier. Elizabeth Peters. Dominice C. Poindexter. Anna Marie Powell. Andrea S. Preback. Courtney E. Price. Kimberly M. Pruce. Anna Rappaport. Kimberly Beth Reed. Stephanie E. Reed. Lauren Reesberg. Valerie O'Race. Lilibel Onawaney. Isis R. Rice. Jamia A. Ojo. Lorena H. Rivas. Emily N. Roraba. Alicia S. Rosso. Emily Rumsey. Christy Kuhlman Russell. K. 
Kelly L. Schock. Robin Shank Sanderson. <laughs> Tina Sari. <laughs> Amanda M. Scussel. <laughs> Christopher W. Seeger. Erica S. Shepard. Sharon Renee Simon. Supreet Singh. Please remain standing in the class of 2016. Dr. Hilton, I have the honor to present to you the aforementioned candidates for the degree of Master of Science. The students have been duly examined and recommended by the faculty and approved by the board of directors. I therefore ask you, bestow on them the degrees in course. Very happily. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon the aforementioned candidates the degree of Master of Science. Congratulations. A pretty exciting moment. Now, at this point, I would like to invite all of our graduates to turn around, face your families and friends, and thank them, thank them, thank them for the love and support. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Edward Healton. Thank you, Pat, and good afternoon. Due to weather circumstances that we all saw this morning and the extraordinary number of graduates we are celebrating today, President DeJoya regrets that, he, that concurrent ceremonies prevent him from being with us in person this afternoon. In his stead, he has asked me to share his very best wishes along with the following reflections on having reached this very special milestone in your educational journeys. From President DeJoya. On behalf of all of us, I wish to express our gratitude to Dr. Malone for making this very special day that much more special by sharing with us the perspective and insight that she has gained through her life's work. It is my great pleasure and privilege to be with you all today to share this moment, this celebration with you, the women and men 
of the School of Nursing and Health Studies, Class of 2016, your families, and our community. A word of gratitude to the many individuals who have been here for you, those fellow students, colleagues, mentors, and loved ones who have provided you with the support to help you work toward your aspirations to realize this dream today. To the extraordinary faculty behind me, Dean Clunan, Clunan, sorry, and Dr. Hilton, thank you for the deep care and commitment you invest every semester in teaching, in scholarship, in clinical care, and your contributions to the academic vibrancy of this university community. And to our staff, thank you all for your work to make today possible. And finally, to our graduates, to the women and men before me, congratulations. This is a moment for celebration. This is a moment grounded in all of your hard work leading up to this day, in the experiences you have brought with you, and the journey of exploration that has taken place in the years since you arrived, expanding your minds and your hearts to be able to meet the needs of the world. You joined our community at an extraordinary time in history, a moment of extraordinary global connection, of potential, and of possibility. This is a moment in which we are faced with many urgent challenges, access and affordability of health care, health inequities in underserved communities, emerging infectious diseases, and aging populations, all that demand our most serious attention. This is a moment in which more is demanded of us to recognize the dignity and to enable the flourishing of one another. In an address given a few months after becoming Pope at a meeting of the International Federation of Catholic Medical Associations, His Holiness Pope Francis spoke to the nature of the medical and healthcare professions and to the empathy and compassion that define them. The service that you engage in the treatment that you provide is, in his words, not measured solely by efficiency, but above all by the attention and love given to the person whose life is always sacred and inviolable. As we know, among the defining features of healthcare today is the continuing march of technology, of increased specialization, of broadening diagnostic and therapeutic avenues. You have at your disposal an ever-increasing variety of new skills, devices, practices, protocols, and prescriptions to both treat and prevent disease and illness. You will be able to provide better care and service and build better health systems because of all of this. But you also have an unchanging mission, a responsibility that becomes ever more important as healthcare treatment advances and evolves, a commitment to provide care and to build systems that recognize the innate dignity and worth of every individual. For Pope Francis, fostering an awareness of the human person in his frailty stands at the center of all medical and healthcare work. You have taken on this responsibility to see each person who engages our healthcare system as an individual worthy of care, to recognize the human condition in each person. And it is in this way, through your care, compassion, and your empathy, that you make an even greater difference in our world. Today we recognize your commitment to fostering an awareness of the human condition, to developing the mindset, the talents, the experiences to be principled and effective leaders in healthcare. And we celebrate you for your hard work, your service, and your dedication to the field of healthcare. Now as you commence, as you embark on a new phase in your lives, this is a very special time. It is your time. We could not be more honored to share this moment with you. Congratulations on this very special day. I would also like to add my personal congratulations. We are indeed very proud of all of you. And I wish all of you the very best and great success in realizing your goals as you start your new journey. Congratulations and thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Dr. Healton. Now, if everyone would please stand for the singing of the alma mater, which will again be led by members of Georgetown University Concert Choir and Chamber Singers. The alma mater, in the off chance that you don't know the words, um, is located on the back of the commencement program book. Um, and after the singing of the alma mater, if you would also remain standing for the benediction, which will be offered by Sister Helen Scarry, our beloved Roman Catholic chaplain at Georgetown University. Benediction is offered to our graduates, to everyone present, and a prayer for the world. Go forth to become your own special word. Listen deeply and intently as God speaks. Be still and know that I am God. Go forth in trust. Blessed are they who believe that there will be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to them by God. Go forth in peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, God's peace that is meant to dwell in our hearts here and hereafter. Be God's peace among all those you meet. Go forth in the power and courage of God's word. Listen for it, pronounce it, become it. Amen. Alleluia. Yes, let it be. Thank you, sister. There will be a reception for students, guests, faculty, and staff on the esplanade of this building and the diploma distribution will take place there as well. Everyone is welcome. Will our guests please remain standing at their places until those on the stage and the graduates have recessed, and please follow the procession directly to the reception. The commencement exercises of Georgetown University School of Nursing and Health Studies are now officially closed. Congratulations. <laughs>